Get empowered at the grand opening of The Elm on Sunday, September 18th. You don't want to miss it. Visit theelm.church to get empowered. Join us for the grand opening of the Elm on Sunday, September 18th. We come under the, the anointing today, Father, to experience your glory, dear Lord. So bless us, Father, under the sound of my voice today. Let them experience your glory, your splendor. Let the anointing be fresh. Let it crush the evil. Ha! This is God's house. So we establish this kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us now, Father, how we may have gone one way or the other way, the wrong way, but not the right way. You say, I am, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I remember them no more. So, Father, we stand upon that promise to the Lord. But our sins and our afflictions and our wickedness and our last nights and this morning in the past, give us a fresh start with you to experience all that you have for us for the for the kingdom for the power forever so we ask these things in the great name of Jesus we pray and we all say Amen we're invited to get empowered with Pastor Barrett Barry and the Elm the Empowered Living Ministries at the grand opening of the Elm Church on Sunday September 18th Go to our website, theelm.church, for more information. And one of the times I experienced God's glory was the fact I was the, my father has four kids, but I'm the responsible one, so they say. He was ill. And I had to have the responsibility of deciding whether or not they were going to resuscitate him or not. And because he was so ill, and my, my siblings lived further away, I lived two hours from my dad. I was the one to make the decision that they were going to resuscitate him or not. They did it once. They did it twice. They did it a third time. And this time, I checked with my siblings. I checked to see, do you need to go see dad? Because it's getting rough on him. And they said, well, just do what you think you need to do. So this time, the doctors called me and they said, this is it. He can't handle anymore. This is it. We'll hold him until you get here to say your goodbyes. Struggling. But I've been praying. I've been praying with the fellas. I've been spending time in prayer. I was seeking God's face continuously. Not just for my father, but just for my life. For others I was connected to. And this time I didn't hear from God that he was going to end this way. See, my father was a genius. He was a Mensa. He was one of the first black men in America to get an MBA. He almost got his doctorate in business. He had an ABD, which means he took all the courses, but didn't finish his dissertation. He was a management consultant in the 60s. I remember my mom said he rolled, he rolled up and met her in some funny looking car. It smelled funny. She hadn't seen it before. She was a country girl from South Bend, Indiana. He was a city boy from Chicago. My dad had a Mercedes-Benz in the 60s, a black man in America, a summer home in Michigan, grew up on the south side. He was Catholic, but he, he had a way of understanding his relationship with God. But he, under my teaching as Catholic, he needed to give his life to the Lord. But I believed. So when they called me, I went to the doctors. I grab my oil. I keep it in my car. I keep it in my bag. Sometimes I keep it in my pocket. I anoint my head every morning myself with oil. So when I go to the doctors, they met me at the hallway, at the doorway. And I told them to hold on. And about six or seven of them gathered in the hallway as I went in to see my father. But see, I've been praying. I've been praying the prayer of faith. There's something about the prayer of faith that moves mountains. There's something about the prayer of faith 
that the enemy has to bow down to. There's something about the prayer of faith that changes your experience with God. Because now he knows from the depths of your being that you believe. So I entered into the room and I looked at my father with tubes down his throat. Now see, I call him father. He was my daddy, was my father, but he was a, my mother and my father divorced when I was young, so he wasn't really in my life. But I had a responsibility. The word of the Lord says, honor thy father and thy mother, so your days be long upon the face of the earth. So if I serve God, I have to honor his word. Although my father didn't honor me, but I went there with him regardless. As I entered the room and I saw him laid out. See, my prayer to God was, since he was a genius and a brilliant man, I asked God if he would take him into his sleep. Huh. And not that he would suffer. No, 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 no. He wasn't deserving of that. He was a brilliant man. He needed to leave here with his honor and his dignity. So I entered the room. I already knew God had heard my prayer. And I anointed this Catholic man with oil. As soon as I put the oil on his head, his eyes opened up. And he started pulling on the tubes. I said, Dad, what are you doing? He started pulling on the tubes. It was immediate. But see, I had been praying the prayer of faith. As he pulled the tubes out, the nurses come running in, the doctors come running in to see what's, what's transpiring. But I knew what was happening. I get so excited about it because God is no respecter of person. What he's done for one, he'll do for another too. As he pulled the tubes out, the doctors and nurses were puzzled. The nurses started to help. When the last two came out, my dad sat up and he said, can I have a chocolate milkshake? Like nothing ever happened. I tell you this story to encourage you. See, it was the prayer of faith. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That day, my dad was released in less than a week. <laughs> Didn't go that way. Went even further. He went and had lunch about two weeks later, two, three weeks later. He went and had lunch. He went back to his room and laid down to take a nap. The Lord honored my prayer. And he transitioned in his sleep. Now see, some of you that's sad but to the one you see afflicted and sick my dad had dementia had lost his mind it was a blessing to know that he was given the honor as once recognized by Mensa as a genius to go away and to sleep God heard my prayer it was a prayer of faith and then Number 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that they may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, a righteous woman availeth much. I think you're about to get ready to go to the baptism room. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's a story in 1 Kings 18 chapter about Elijah and Baal. Baal was a, a king, a god to those who were not connected to the Lord. Baal was one who had dominion and power. He had authority. He had prophets. He was a powerful man and he was in competition with Elijah the prophet. And Elijah the prophet was the one who was known for fame for generations for generations for this story here. 
<sighs> for three years, God did not provide any rain for the, men, the people of God, for the Israelites. And so Baal was looking like he was the powerful one because he was the one that was holding, he thought, holding the Egyptians back from experiencing the blessings of rain. But Elijah was a righteous man before the eyes of God. And Elijah, when he prayed to God, and then rain came after three years of a drought. Huh. Rain came. I remember I was ministering in Boston. Every Friday night, we would get together with a few brothers, three, four, five of us. We would put on our collars and our black suits and our black shirts. We were young and fearless. We would go out in Boston to Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan. And we would go wherever there was a homicide that week, we would go to where the brothers were. We would go and we would pray on the site of the homicide. We would let the gangsters see us in our black suits and collars to know that Christian men were just as courageous as the Muslim. That we didn't fear anything or anybody. And I remember the guns being drawn on us because they didn't believe that a Christian man would come over into the neighborhood. They didn't believe it. But one night we were going out to serve. It was raining. And this brother Dwight, he looked up in the heavens and he prayed because he wanted to go minister that night. There was a tragedy. Someone had been killed that, that week. So he prayed and the rain went away. I've seen rain go away just like Elijah who prayed over the rain. But see, he prayed the prayer of faith. He believed in his being that he could call and speak to heaven and the rains would go away. Hmm. Same with Elijah. But the testimony is that the rain went away for Elijah and for you and me. The testimony is not we can call out rain, but you can call rain to stop if you believe. I've seen it done. Ah, the testimony is God showed the people that he was God. The unbelievers of Baal who were worshiping idols could know that God is God and their false kings were defeated. In our own lives, when we call on God, we're showing the world that our God is God. But you have to believe in the depths of your being that all that you have, that when you pray and ask for anything in his name, it'll come to pass. But do you believe? Or are you just praying and having a conversation with some idol God? I say no. I say no. The God we serve is mighty and powerful. He has promises to keep. He said, if you ask of anything in my name, in the name of Jesus, he has to do what he said he was going to do. Because God is not a man that he should lie. He's not bad. No, no. He's the God of Elijah. He's the God of Abraham. He's the God of Moses. He's the God of Jesus. He's a God of Nana and them. You know I'm talking about an Auntie Jane. He's that God. The God who's through. So pray the prayer of faith. As I come. Verse 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be blessed. Hallelujah, Jesus. That you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's something about being a testimony and sharing your testimonies with someone else. There's something about when you pray for someone else besides yourself. It's a prayer of faith and intercessory prayer when you seek for somebody else. There's something powerful about that, but, but you have to live righteous. I know in this day, in this age, many of us are trying to live spiritual. Many of us don't want to go to church because we don't see the reasons for going to church. I'd rather go to church and be around people who are believers who are also praying and trusting God and believing God to increase my faith 
so I can experience his glory. But you have to believe that God is still answering prayers. I believe. You can't tell me to be a Muslim. Huh. You can't tell me to be a Buddhist. You, you can't tell me to be a Jew. You can't tell me to be an uh, agnostic. You can't tell me because I've experienced God for myself. Many of you had that same testimony. You can't tell me there's anything other than believing that Jesus came, walked, died, and went to hell, got the keys, and got up with all power in his head. You can't tell me that's not real because when I cry out to the Lord, he's heard my prayer. If that's your testimony right now. If that's your testimony right now. Wherever you are, lift your hands to heaven and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say here, thank you, Jesus. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. So today, as we wait for the baptism, we have three candidates. <laughs> I remember the first time I was baptized, I was 12. And I can look out and I can see it was high up. It probably felt like a mile up, but it was probably just 20 feet or 15 feet, or I don't know. And I looked out and I saw them, but I was 12. And I did it because, you know, to my, in my mind, I've been saved since I was born because my family was in the church all the time. How many people went to church all the time? I didn't know a Sunday in my life when I wasn't in church as a child. I was so thankful to go to college because I got to college, I could backslide and I didn't have to go. I could make the excuse. Oh, it ain't like my church at home. <laughs> hey, you did that? I did that. I did that. Matter of fact, I went to school with my pastor's son, and none of us went to church. So we were just tripping. We were just... <laughs> So, when I accepted my call to ministry, I went to Boston. It was my first full-time ministry job as executive pastor of a church in Brockton. And I went there, and I was going to leave, and go on to do ministry for men I got baptized again and this time I understood the significance of being baptized I understood that me going down was me going into the grave like Jesus it was me going down and dying to self it was me going down and confessing not just with my mouth but with my actions that Jesus is Lord that he got up on that good great Sunday morning he went into the grave where he was dead see one thing about Buddha Muhammad Baal and what other gods you can name What's significant about our Lord and Savior Jesus, all of those gods died, but they didn't get back up. They didn't get back up. Jesus came and in three years of ministry, he walked the face of the earth and he taught us the way, how to live, how to pray, how to worship. He taught us how to live a life pleasing unto his father. And then he didn't even have to do it. He got to the Garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, if you could take this cup from me, if I don't have to go through the brutality of all these other folk who don't even believe me to the point of right now, they can't even stay awake and guard me. But I'm going to give my life for them. But if I have to do it, I'll do it. If it be your will. And I know how stressful that could have been. The word of the Lord says his sweat was like beads of blood because of the stress of it all. His sweat came out like blood because he knew after being in heaven for thousands if not millions of, zillions of years with his father in heaven, he 
came down to take on this flesh like you and I to become Emmanuel. And he knew he could have called on legions of angels to come and wipe everybody out. But he didn't do it. He made that sacrifice for you and for me. But he didn't have to do it. So when you dip into this water today, what you're saying is that I believe in the one who paid it all for me. Down a road, up a mountain, seven miles from the place of his birth, on a hill called Golgotha, called Calvary. And when you go down, you'll be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And when you come back up from going into the grave, much like Jesus, he'll come out new. All those sins, all those mistakes, all that wickedness, all just all that doubt that you may have had in life, is gone. This is your new day. This is your new day. We didn't even have in church yet. We did this just for y'all. Just for y'all. We do all my church and television to the 18th. You're special. You're unique. You were crafted and formed by the hand of God. I like to say God put us on a, on a potter's wheel. We are clay. And with his hand, he formed you and shaped you in your mother's womb. With his hand. He spun you around. You were the, he was a potter and you were the clay. And then he sent his anointing like fresh oil and mixed it into the clay. And as he formed you into the woman that you are going to be, ha, he paused and breathed the breath of life into you so that you would have this anointing filled within your belly forever and evermore. The special anointing that God has gifted to each and every one of us. How when you go into this water, it's a new day. State your name. Jazara. Jazara Elamine. Hey, before you get in. Go ahead, get in, get in, get in. And then turn around and sit down right there. Amen. Stretch your hands to, to her, please, everybody. Let's pray for her. Mm. This is fun, right? This is exciting. Hey, let's believe. So, I want you to state your name and repeat after me. Yes, just out of Say, I confess. I confess with my mouth Jesus that Jesus is Lord. I believe He came. I believe He came. Died. Died. And rose again. And rose again. Yes, I do. Yes. 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 I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Ha! Go ahead and step in. What did I say? <laughs> you got it? All right. This is this is her fault for me doing this today. Amen. We want to thank her for that. Tell us your full name. Uh, Brooklyn Imani Nichols. One more time. Brooklyn Imani Nichols. All right. So Brooklyn. Jesus. Yes, I do. Uh, repeat these three prayers to me. But you got to believe it in your heart now. I confess. I confess that, Jesus that Jesus is Lord. That He came. That He came. He walked. He walked. He died. He died. He rose. That He rose. He lives. And He lives forevermore. I want. I want to be called. To be called home with Him. Home with Him. When my time comes. When my time comes. 
I believe, yes. Yes. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Amen. I'm about to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What's your name? Your full name? Arlie Rasan Neal. So why did you decide to get baptized today? Because I want to be closer to God. Amen. Have you been baptized before? It's your first time. Awesome. Awesome. You can see yourself saved? Amen. Ah, oh, this is exciting. We're the last one, but it's number three. There's something about there's three people today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did you see that right there? That was perfect. It's a perfect Sunday. Amen. Amen. So, repeat that to me. I confess. I confess. Jesus. That Jesus is Lord. He came. That he came. Walked. Walked. Died. Died. Got up. And got up. Do you love him? Yes. You trust him? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is exciting. When you go down, you get up new. So I believe you. Your business is struggling. Hey, Amen. I pray and I see somebody. I'm not saying my prayer alone, but I witness it happen. Amen. So let's pray now. Whatever your need may be, affliction or whatever it may be, your business or your income, whatever it may be, I'm believing the anointing that God has blessed me with is more than enough to bless you too. Amen. Father God, those who are gathered under the sound of my voice today, dear Lord, speak unto their hearts, Father. Increase, dear Lord. For you know their needs. Meet them at their crossroad. Provide. Give them victory when others have counted them out. You count them in. Heal those, dear God, who are afflicted with anxiety, sadness, depression. You mend them now, the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You are invited to get empowered with Pastor Barrett Berry and the Elm, the Empowered Living Ministries, at the grand opening of the Elm Church on Sunday, September 18th. Go to our website, theelm.church, for more information.